Deuteronomy chapter 15. At the end of every seven years, and we're going to look at the sabbatical year of release, thou shalt make a release. Let go. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth off unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother, Jewish, because it's the Lord's release. So here's the time period. It's gone. Wiped off. Cleaned up. Start over. New slate. Any more uh, expressions I can use. Of a foreigner that's not Jewish, thou mayest exact it again. But that which is thine with thy brother, Jewish, thy hand shall release. It helps the people out. It gets them back on their feet again amongst the Jewish people, under a Jewish rule, under a, a rulership of the priest and God. The people of God, the children of God, set off by God, a land by God. At the end of seven years, that debt of your brother, your kinship of the tribes of Israel, release it. That Gentile, go ahead and continue and make them pay. Save when there shall be no poor among you. Look at the poor people. For the Lord shall greatly bless thee in the land, in the land, in the land, that's Jewish, that's Israel, there's no Gentile, there's no church, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it. So all these rules and regulations is about the land, not the church. Only if thou carefully hearken unto thy voice of the Lord thy God. Everything we've read from Exodus on. To observe to do all these commandments which I command thee this day. The law. This is the law. For the Lord thy God blesses thee, makes happy, as he promised thee. God holds all his promises. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. Well, Germany couldn't understand that. The house of Rothschild is in the Bible. The bankers that are Jews are in the Bible. And nations hated them. And God said, I will bless them that bless you. And I will curse them that curse you. When he cursed those Jewish bankers. It's in the Bible. But thou shalt not borrow. Thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. But Babylon, Rome, the United Nations are reigning over them today. Why? Because they have not done what God's told them to do. They're not obeying. They are in disobedience. They're not adhering to the word of God, to the voice of God. Now you got the United Nations telling them what to do. You got the President of the United States telling them what to do. You got Russia telling them what to do. And then when Jesus is standing before his trial and before Pontius Pilate, we have no king but Caesar. Well, that that sort of doomed you for a while. For what, 2,000 years now? If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren, Jewish, within any of thy gates, any city that's in the land of Israel, in thy land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, of the twelve tribes, thou shalt not harden thy heart nor shut thy hand from thy poor brother. Help him. You may. Take care of him. Lift the spirits. But thou shalt open thy hand wide unto him, and shalt, uh, thou shalt surely lend him sufficient for his need and that which he wanted. Now this is a nation that's under God, individual, I, I, th I think I heard that somewhere. Of a nation that professes to take God and his son out of their publicness. But here is a nation set forth. Now there's not going to be any false poor people. Any false, false panhandlers. As much as you can go to Jerusalem. 
and, and you want a strong drink, you're going to do it before the, before God. Here are people that are in the nation of God, and they are doing right. They're doing the law. They're doing what God has told them to do. And yet they still find themselves poor. As the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the twelve tribes, they're not going to do it falsely. They're not going to waste their money. If they do, there are provisions today in the church age. Am I to help the poor? Yes, we are. But you got to do it with the fact is, you got to realize, is that person truly poor? Is that person incapable of making a full living by trying to make a living? And when you deal with somebody who comes up to you, they got a sign or say, can I have some money for food? Can I have some money to get a, a bottle of water? Can I, I, I'm homeless. I'm a veteran. What do you do? All right. You want food or water? I'll take you over to that restaurant. I'll take you over to that little convenience store. And I'll get you a sandwich and a dessert and a, a Coca-Cola or, or water, whatever you want. And we've had people take us up on those offers. My wife makes bags with canned food and gospel tracts and dry food. We will hand you to that. And they have taken it. We have seen people give homeless people fruits. And when those people have disappeared, we have seen the homeless people take those fruits and throw them away in disgust. I have seen people who you give them a, a money, whatever it was, outside a window and drops to the ground. And they're cussing because they're going to bend over and get it. I have offered I have offered to take someone into a store. I said, I'll get you. I forget what it was. No, 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 no. Just give me the money now and get it later. No. We are in a day and age, a realm that there are people out there who make a living doing by pretending to be poor. There have been cameras that follow them to their Mercedes Benz and to their Cadillacs. And it's sorry to those people who are really, truly, surely cannot make it. And our hearts have melted because some people we turn away and wonder, is it the truth or are they lying? God bless America. So we got to use wisdom of God today. You got, okay, you want something? I'll get you something. I'll get you a bag. You can't just hand out money today. It may be bought for a prostitute. It may be bought for cigarettes. It may be bought for drugs. It may be bought for food. You can't do that today. I'm sorry. There's only one man I ever gave $20. When I gave him the $20 for what the need is, it's between him and me. I told him, while well, he held that bill and I hand that bill, I said, if you use it any other purpose, is this money I'm giving to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you use this money to, to voidness of that, what we're talking about between you and me, it's going to be on your hands. You, I don't give money. We offer. So we're looking at poor people. And they, they need help. The economy makes some people who do work hard can't get ahead. And the Bible doesn't say they're poor because, well, you know, because, you know, because of this saying. It. No, it doesn't give any excuse why they're poor. They're poor. There are people who are poor and they try to work hard and they just can't make it. They're not getting the necessary needs. And we're going to be leaning to that as we get to the to the tribulation period before which the rapture will happen. Because this world's got to lead to the fact is that the middle class has got to disappear. And when you read the book of Revelation, there's the poor, and then there's the very rich. And you've got to rely on the government to receive that mark. There's going to be no in-between people as the middle class. So if there be among you a poor man of one of your brethren. Now here's a restriction in the Old Testament for a Jew. It's not that will you go into this restaurant or you go into this community. The restriction is, are you Jewish? And Peter and John finds this in Acts chapter, I believe it's 3 or 4. Here's a man outside the gate and he's asking alms. And there's nothing wrong with that. He received the alms. I believe his ankles were wrong. He couldn't work. He couldn't walk. He couldn't stand. He could not make a living. So you would help that guy. He's your, he's your comrade of the Israel faith of God. Within thy gates of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thy heart, nor shut thy hand from thy poor brother. Jewish. 
But thou shalt open thy hand wide unto him, and shalt surely lend him sufficient for his need in that which he wanted. And you'll find stories in the Old Testament. Here's this guy. He's, he's coming to the village. He's coming to the city. He's got nowhere to stay. And the guy says, come on in my house. I'll give your ass this ponder, uh, provider. And I'll give you, you know, wine. We'll sit down. We'll have a meal. Those days are gone. I live on the edge of where people, you invite strangers in your house, my grandparents, did, and to help them. Those days are gone. You can't. I'm sorry. Today, it's too wicked, too vile. I wouldn't even dare pick up a... Uh, but on the hearts, we did pick up one. And it turned to be a blessing, but we live in a sick society today. Very sick. And I can't say not to do it, and I can't say do it. Yep, with a, with a the metal leg. We live in a very sick society. And you've got to question that poor person. If you're going to give them money, uh, you can't. You just can't give them money. you, you got to buy or get what they need. That money will be wasted, I'm telling you, if it's the wrong person. Verse 9. Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart. Oh, look at, look at God. You wicked heart. That's my wicked heart, too, you know. i got a wicked heart. I'm not all pleasant and godly and loving when someone's trying to stop me from preaching the gospel. I get very worldly. I get very angered inside. I may not show it. I've got a heart that's impatient. I've got a heart that doesn't like pain. Saying that seventh year, the year of the release, here it comes, it's at hand, it's marked on my calendar, and that I be evil against thy poor brother and thou giveth him not and he crieth unto the Lord against thee it be a sin unto thee well, it comes to seven years well if I do this for you I'm going to lose money in the, in the seven years because I have to give it back to you I'm not going to do it and God says I'm going to hear his prayer and that is a sin that's to a Jew that's not don't you dare go you know today but, Walk in a bank and say it's the seventh year. I don't have to pay my mortgage no more. It's not us We're not in Israel we're not Jewish But in this time it can be done it can be said Thou shalt surely give him and thy heart and thine heart shall not be grieved upset when thou giveth unto him because that is I mean, because that for this thing the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all thy works, and in all that thou gettest thy hand unto. God has given you, God has provided for you, for you to help others. Now, for being grieved, let's see the church age, 2 Corinthians 9 7. Now, let's look at the church age. 2 Corinthians 9 7. Now, this is the church age. Are we to give 10%? Let's we'll see what Paul has to say as far as the church. Verse 6. But this I say, he that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. I don't know if there's a 10% in there. The less you give, the less you get back. The more you give, the more you get back. Every man in the church age every man according as he purpose in his heart my heart says I, I want to give money to these people my heart says I want to give this money to these people my heart says well I don't want to give this amount to that money because I don't want to be wasted so let him give not grudgingly oh I'm going to do it oh, I'm giving the church again could you spend it somewhere else? Or of necessity. 
Well, we're going to do this program, we're going to do that program, and we're going to raise that money for the building fund. We got our little temperature here. Look how high we're getting to the temperature to get the full amount of money, and we're going to have been in churches like that. Oh, we've got to have money, or the television show, or the radio program's going to be turned off. We've got to do it. Oh, everyone, give, please. We've got to sign up sheet for giving. Oh, please, give, 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 give. Oh, come on, please, please, please. Come on, give. That's unnecessary. God says, I don't approve of that. For God loveth a cheerful giver. What is the requisite for a Christian today that God loves you giving cheerfully? And there are people you're going to deal with who are poor and you help them out, as I've said to them. I mean, your heart is, is not going to be cheerful in there. It's going to be broken down. It's going to be, I wish I could have done more for that family. What's that family do? There's a family right now. I'm what are they doing? Where are they now? We gave them Bibles. We gave them gospel tracts. We gave them help. Did they get saved? Are they on the mode of salvation? And there are people who are blinded by the world and they're poor because they don't have the riches of God through Jesus Christ. Are you able to give them the word? Are you able to give them the way? Are you able to give them a, a gospel track? Are you able to witness to those poor people who if they're die without Jesus Christ will suffer hell for all eternity with nothing, nakedness? Meanwhile, while we're in heaven, clothed in fine linen with streets of the street of gold and jewels with the walls and <coughs> the gates are pearls. Some of us getting crowns. There's plenty of poor people around. And you don't have to give them money. Give them the gospel. There are churches out there that, that give them all kinds of food. They don't give them the gospel. All you do is fatten them up so they can sizzle in hell. Thou shalt surely give him. And thy, and thy heart shall not be grieved. See, there's... 2 Corinthians 9 7. When thou giveth him, because that for this thing the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all thy work. Now take that with 2 Corinthians 9. Imagine Old Testament passage going with a New Testament passage. God may have given you money that there may be someone who needs help and the opportunity to be helped. And yet, what is this? Hebrews, is it Hebrews 13? There's a particular statement here, and I gotta be careful because I don't want to be Roman Catholic. Oh, uh, where is it? Two. Two. 13 2. Now I'm gonna read the verse, and I'm gonna. The Old Testament, you can follow 13 2 in the Old Testament. It says Hebrews. Okay? You gotta be careful when you go church age and Hebrews but there's good things in here for the church be not forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unaware God may give you something it may be extra something or it may be a part of your something and God may say Okay, go down there and give that guy a test. See what he's going to do. Now, right now, there are a few instances in my life that I've said no. I said, Lord God, if that was an angel, if that was somebody you sent, maybe not an angel, maybe someone needed help and that you sent them to me and I said no, and I shouldn't have, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. And when it comes to the realm of giving, you got to do it smart, and yet you got to do it prayerfully. You got to be open for God in your smarts. Because if you hand money to someone who's going to use it vile, then God's going to hold you accountable for that money. And yet, if you hold your money back and give it to somebody that maybe God has sent to you for help, and you kept it, you're going to be accountable for your money. <laughs> Throughout the Old Testament, you read there are people who have entertained people out of generosity, and they were an angel. And they were mans and had no wings, may I also say that. Okay. 
You say, is that going to happen? Oh, Lord God, if I, I really love you, I want to do right. I just bowed my head over this plate of spaghetti, and oh, man, it's just so good to have this pork sausage and all that. What's that? You want me to go get Peter? Okay. What else you want me to do? Oh, he's there at the dress? Okay. Not worship you? Fine, no problem. Hi, I'm John. Oh, great. Uh, John, get up. I'm just an angel, fellow brother. Don't you dare worship me. So can God send angels in the New Testament, uh, Acts chapter 10, and the book of Revelation? Peter, I'm in jail. Oh, whoa. What? what huh, huh? An angel smote him across the face, told him to put his, put his slippers on him, walk, open up the gates when he got out the other game. Huh? So I'm not going to limit God. And there were times that I think I could have done something, and I did. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. And when you've done it smartly, and when you truly see that God has sent you to do something for those people, you walk away in tears. I mean, there's nothing more you take you, you take that person or people. You want to wrap them in your bosom and do more. That's cheerfully. Again, there's one central the, the person and invite them in my house, and it's like uh, this is such a perverted world now. I don't know. I don't know. I think God understands sometimes with safety and your family and that today. But it burdens me when I don't. And I think God was leading afterwards. So you do find the Old Testament and the New Testament Scripture, verses 15, verse 10, and 2 Corinthians 9, 7. That's my study today from, from my other diploma I'm getting. God is not the mean God of the Old Testament and the nice, joyful, little, fluffy little God in the New Testament. He's loving, forgiving, everything in both Testaments. Though the law is not for me, verse 10 is for me. Now we're going to get into the governments and all that. Let's look at it. So verse number 10, Thou shalt surely give him, of thy heart shall not be grieved, when thou giveth unto him. Because for this thing the Lord thy God shall bless thee, make you happy in all thy works, and all that thou puttest thy hand unto do. Thy hand unto you know, there's a passage in Corinthians that says, "Oh, I want to give mission. I want to give money to the missionary. I want to give that money to the missionary. You got a few dollars in your pocket, but your wife really needs to be taken out to eat. Or those dresses she's wearing, they're, they're getting a little. If you open up your closet, the moths are in there with with, with uh, yarn buddy bellies. And instead of that missionary getting the money, the Bible. This is the Bible." The Bible says you're to give to your wife. And when she that's not. Oh, I love the Lord. I love going to church. I love the church. But what about your family? Oh, cares. I don't celebrate birthdays. You know that? I don't celebrate birthdays. But my wife and daughter, they get presents throughout the whole year just being my family. I don't need a special case. I love you. Here's this. I don't know my wife gets to the point now. I don't know what she said. I'm afraid maybe to say I like this because I'm going to get it. But it makes you happy when your family's happy. It makes you happy when other people are happy. When God's giving the ability. And then when you can't give. And the only resources you got is prayer. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Socialism is not going to work. Did you see that? And that's what Jesus says. Matthew 26, 11. Jesus quotes out of this passage. Matthew 26, 11. I think I said. Oh, my Bible does not want to open. It just stay.
Matthew 26 11 uh, now watch the context here verse 6 now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper well they weren't obeying the law were they is he supposed to be outside the gate crying unclean unclean there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box. That's the first time alabaster shows up. In a very precious ointment. So here's this, this expensive box. And in the box is expensive ointment. And poured it on his head as he sat at me. When the disciples, Peter, James, and John, and Judas, match that with John chapter 12 in your own study, saw it they had indignation extreme anger they had that a lot saying to what purpose is this waste you mean precious ointment it was a bad attitude for this ointment might have been sold for much this is judas speaking and given to the poor this is judas speaking your democrats when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble you the woman? They're yelling at that woman. Then say me, and Jesus takes it personally. But here's the point. Why are you troubling this woman? For she has wrought a good work on me. So everybody I'm supposed to give ten dollars five dollars fifty dollars did this woman give money no she gave a box of ointment and look what Jesus quotes for ye have the poor always with you but me ye have not always now look at the context here a woman gives a very expensive ointment the disciples are angered and Jesus quotes from our passage in Deuteronomy. Let's see what else happened. John chapter 12. The full story. John chapter 12. You guys study. John chapter 12 verse 1. Then six days before the Passover came Bethany, where Lazarus with which he had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. And there they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus, one of them that sat at the table with him. Here's this dead guy sitting having a meal. The zombie apocalypse. John chapter 12. But he's not gooey, his body's not, he has his stomach, and he has everything. He's alive and well. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of ointment. Now this is not the same story we read in Matthew. These are two different women in two different places, but look what happens now. So these are two different suppers, two different places, two different people. We're going to see it twice. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? According to another passage in the description of the Bible, where men went out and earned a penny a day, 300 pence is a yearly income. Look who speaks about the poor. Judas. And he, and he said, not that he cared for the poor, Democrats, but because he was a thief <laughs> and had the bag. He had the thief.com, if you're listening. That's pointing out to a particular person. Bear what was put therein. Now watch this. Now a lot of people think these two these two events are the same they're not but they're completely identical don't you see they look like the same but it happened twice and Jesus said let her 
alone. Again, they're picking on the woman. Let her alone. Against the day of my burying has she kept it. They're not going to have time to, to fix Jesus' body up. It's almost time for the Passover. Got to get out of here. The Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes are going to kill us if we don't get ready for the Sabbath. For the poor, for the poor always you have with you. But me, you have not always. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Again. And then speaks about verse 9. Here all these people came to... I want to see Lazarus. Lazarus was a rich man. And right in the middle of that whole thing... Here is what we're reading in Deuteronomy about boredom. Those disciples were upset. Indignation. Peter, James, John, Andrew, you forgot about Deuteronomy 15. Didn't you? Wait a minute, wait a minute. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. When Jesus said that, those two, those disciples should have ran back to somewhere in the Old Testament, that verse is taken. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, are, we, are we speaking bold here or are we not? Verse 10, Thou shalt surely give him, and thy heart shall not be grieved. The disciples were grieved and angered. So Jesus pulls out verse 11, For the poor you shall always have with you. Look at the context. Look what we're talking about. And that both those women, one woman gave an ointment, one woman gave, gave an oil. It wasn't money. It's what they had. One of them, it could be, some people say, I don't, I don't know how, it could have been an inheritance, something just kept for very special, it was kept for Jesus. So we don't have to go out there running, giving money, 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 no. Verse 11, for the poor shall never cease out of the land. That run into the millennium too? Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thy hand wide with thy brother to thy poor and to thy needy in thy land. And that's where Jesus was the... He received the poor people's gift. A complete reversal of what this is talking about. And if thy brother and Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, I think we know what the context of 15 and Deuteronomy is Hebrew. I don't know how far you can go with the book of Hebrews. <gasps> no, we should have. Be sold on today and serve thee six years. Now we're going parenthesis mark in verse 12. Then in the seventh year thou shalt let him go free from thee. Alright, there's a seventh year release. Every seven years the credit goes back. It's zero. But when you have taken a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman and they become your servitude, maybe they owed you money. That's what happened back then. They became in debt to you. The Bible says, in the six years they shall serve you. On the seventh year, even with the eighth year after the release, not in the year of release, but in the sixth year they are finished their servitude to you. The seventh year you let them go. They have paid their debt. And when thou sendest him out, free from thee, see the free? You owe me no more debt. The six years you had paid, whatever debt has been paid, it's gone. Wiped away. You can go now. Thou shalt not let him go away empty. Thou shalt furnish him liberally. You can't say that. Boy, have we changed that word for the wrong. You know that liberality? Here, take this. Here, take this. Here, take that. Here, here some of this. Have some of this. I think you're going to need some of this. This would help you out. Out of thy flock. That's expensive. Out of thy floor. That's 
uh, uh, grain. Out of thy winepress, that's grapes, raisins, and wine. Of that wherewith the Lord thy God has blessed thee, thou shalt give. Everything that God has blessed you with, God expects you, wants you to give out more. People boast, oh, look how much my stocks have made me. Well, how much of your stocks that God has put in you, how much have you put out? Have you any? Thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in the land of Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee. Wherefore I command thee this thing today. And it shall be, if ye say, let's do on the surgeon, a ser servant, so say unto thee, I will not go away from thee, because thou lovest thee, and thy house, because he is well with thee. I don't want to leave. <laughs> I like working for you. You're wonderful. Then thou shalt take an awl, a pointy, sharp instrument, used for sewing, to make holes, and thrust it through his ear onto the door. Pierced ears are a thing to perpetual servanthood. And people don't even know why they do it. Women do it because they're to their fathers or to a husband. Imagine a group of people who are against slavery, against servitude, piercing their ears when the Bible says, You're a perpetual servant. Unto the door. Well, that's interesting. Let's go back to verse 15. Thou shalt remember that was a bond in the land of Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee. What was that redemption night, the Passover night, you were to do with the door? You were to apply that blood on the sides of the door. And the top. Now, hey, I want to be a servant. All right, come over here to the door. I'm going to put a hole in your ear at that door. Yeah. Yeah. Exodus 21.5, when you want to go back there. Pierce ears to a servant. Yeah. Now watch. I'm going to put a hole in your ear. And he shall be thy servant forever. So when you see someone griping and complaining about slavery and they got a hole in their ear, laugh at them. Because they are a hypocrite. And you see more and more today. And now also unto thy maidservant thou shalt do like with. As much as a man, as much as their woman. And that hole in their ear goes to you're my servant almost as much as you ran a, a horse or a cow that's yours it shall not seem hard unto thee when thou sendest him away free from thee for he has been worth a double hired servant to thee in serving thee six years and the lord thy god shall bless thee in all that thou do it all right he served his time let him go furnish him don't feel bad. Don't get upset. Lord God will take care of you. You're taking care of him. And if he sold himself to you, he was poor, and now you're helping him. Hopefully he'll go off and do the same thing. All the first lean males, another paragraph mark, that come of thy herd and of thy flock, Thou shalt sanctify unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work within the firstlings of thy bullock, nor shear the firstlings of thy sheep. That firstborn bullock, that firstborn sheep, he's not to work an ox. He's not to be uh, uh, his, his bull to be shaven off. He's to be a very well taken care of animal until it's time to bring him to Jerusalem. Almost, almost like it becomes your pet. You would give these animals to your hey children, take care of this, give this animal protection, protect them of all things. Oh. Well, look at uh, Japheth. He said, the first thing that comes out of my house, I'm going to offer. Problem is, his daughter came out. He was expecting that sheep or bullet to come running out. Thou shalt eat it before the Lord thy God year by year in the place, Jerusalem, which the Lord shall choose. Thou in thy household. 
and there be any blemish therein, as if it had been lame or blind or have any ill blemish, thou shalt not sacrifice it unto the Lord thy God. Look at that. God has restrictions. I don't know if you go so far. I mean, somebody drew a mustache in Abraham's face, and I don't know if you would get that. But, <laughs> thou shalt eat it within thy gates. The unclean and the clean person. I had heard people tell me that they could eat, you know, this is a time that they can go eat pork. No, it says unclean and clean person. Remember, there's a couple guys that came to Moses and said, listen, it's, it's the Passover and we've been defiled by a dead man in our tent. What shall we do? The unclean, clean person shall eat it alike. As the robot, that's the type of animal, and as the heart. Only thou shalt not eat, oh, look at this, eat the blood thereof. No blood, even at Jerusalem. You can get that strong liquor, but you can't have the blood in Jerusalem. Thou shalt pour it upon the ground as water. You can't go, he five, oh, bum, and bum, 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 pass. Yes. 